Hey everybody, welcome back to Linux Cast. I'm your host, Matt. I'm joined by Tyler. How are you doing, Tyler? Doing good, doing good. So this is the Linux Cast. We talk about Linux. I don't know if that was an obvious choice or not, but we probably should have put something else in the title. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so we were off last week because somebody, and I won't say who, switched to Gen 2. The question is, are you Definitely still on me. Gen 2? How, how long did Gen 2 last? Uh, Gen 2 lasted for, I think, a day and a half. I'm pretty sure it was a day and a half. Okay. I actually stuck with it for longer than I have ever stuck with Gen 2 before. Well, you've uh, made it farther than I have. I've never long. successfully installed it, so... <laughs> I don't know if I will... I, I So, I have a Patreon goal. Like, you know how you can set goals in Patreon? Patreon? Uh, say, when you get to this level amount of money, you'll do this thing. I have a goal for $350 a month <laughs> to, to install Gentoo. I set it as high as I thought I could with getting away with it. Because <laughs> I, I don't know if I ever want to do it or not. <laughs> but I was like, well, Be you know careful, what? man. There will be people who donate just solely to see you suffer. Yeah, I don't think that's going to happen, but I'll, I guess I'll take their money. Uh, <laughs> it'll be an all-night stream because I'll have to start at midnight. Because the last time I tried to install Gentoo, for whatever reason, it ate my entire house bandwidth. My entire family was out in the living room just yelling. The, the internet was so slow because I was apparently downloading gigabytes and gigabytes of something. I don't even know. Something was obviously went wrong. It was weird. Anyways, so uh, Tyler, what have you done this week in Linux? Well, um, actually, I haven't really been doing that much in Linux this week um, other than leaving Linux. I am now a Linux trader. I am an open BSD user and loving it. Um, if if there is absolutely any questions you have about my experience with open BSD, please ask away. Uh, it's been it's been fantastic. How are you going to develop your game on OB open BSD? That's a good question. I don't know. Uh, to be completely honest, I have a feeling that instead of using something like Godot, it's going to require me actually using like a uh, completely like more uh, uh, instead of using an actual game engine in the typical way that people think about game engines, I'll probably have to use like a game library, uh, something like a C library or a C sharp library, something like that to essentially do a lot of the stuff that I want so to do. Uh, it's gonna... Does Python work on open, open BSD? Uh, it... As far as I know, it does. I don't, I'm, I'm Cause there's pretty a, there's sure. There's a lot I... of like, like Pi game and Pi charm and stuff like that. I, I don't know anything about Python. Yeah. But I know there's gaming stuff for Python, so that could be an option for you. Yeah, I I don't know. I mean, I do know Python, but I mean, if I have a preference, uh, to be honest, I, I'm now more inclined to uh, take on the challenge of learning, uh, developing a game and just see. Um, that sounds really interesting to me. Uh, I, it's a huge undertaking, but um, I don't know. I feel like it'll be worth worth the time. Uh, but just in case, if anyone's watching this and they're like, "Hey, I, I would like to know how what what stuff doesn't work in uh, in OpenBSD," that's a good question. This right here doesn't work in OpenBSD. For some ungodly reason, this thing right here just shits the bed all the time. And for the audio listeners, um, he's holding up his his uh, Blue Yeti microphone. Yeah. Um, it, it's very weird. Like, the way audio devices, video devices work and how you interact with them on OpenBSD is very simple, very straightforward. Um However, this device here, I can, uh, or the Blue Yeti, uh, again, for those who are listening, uh, it works, sort of, um, if I'm, so essentially the way OpenBSD works is the internal sound card on my laptop here goes to the default device, as it should, makes sense. However, while it's the default device, I cannot specify with AWCAT, which is what you use for recording on, a, on OpenBSD or any other program, I can't specify it to use, uh, the way OpenBSD works is like there's SND slash zero, that's your default device, and then 
other devices, USB devices, whatever, go on top of that. So this device plugged in should be SND slash one, but uh, yeah, it, it don't work. There's a command that you can run to make the uh, USB devices uh, essentially go into the default device, like become the default device. And then when they're unplugged, the internal comes back to the default. Um, if I do that, I can record with this thing. The only minor issue is I can only record for about 45 seconds. So, when have the, yeah. I, I'm just going to say this right now. You wouldn't have these problems on Linux, but then that's not true because you have plenty of problems on Linux too. <laughs> I was about to say, I mean, I had multitude of problems with pulse. Um, multitudes of problems the uh the one thing that i will say um even though my mic here is finicky um there's a real easy workaround uh but the main thing is is i was stunned when i booted into o openbsd and literally i installed firefox opened it launched a video there was no screen tearing i did not have pycom running no screen tearing and the audio just magically started playing at a decent audio volume what the hell man how can linux not get that right i i find it utterly hilarious that as you were talking about the merits and awesomeness of open bsd you looked like a japanese movie because your lips were moving and your audio was about five seconds delayed it was hilarious it caught up eventually <laughs> but <laughs> uh yeah uh not necessarily the best act advertisement for open bsd right there <laughs> yeah um i'm i'm, I'm like 99 percent sure i have to do some extra setup for my other webcam to work the internal one here i have no idea but i can get way better i mean it's still a sh it's a shitty laptop laptop webcam like let's not kid ourselves but i can get much better quality out of it specifying different options using something like ffmpeg or something like that i can get better audio or video quality out of it but uh, i mean obviously discord's not going to not not going to give me any settings for that i mean like come on now it's just going to default to whatever crappy setting oh, oh, open bsd defaults it to so yeah, but it works. <laughs> well, I'm I will happy give credit for it. there. Do you, so, what do you think the chances are of you being on OpenBSD a week from now? Uh, it's probably very, very likely. I I don't see myself switching for a quite a while. I really like it. Okay, I, I'm gonna put a bet on it that you won't be on there. I'm not gonna put any money towards it. That would be silly, but. And the reason why is mostly to have to do with, because I know you like the game. And you said there were some games on OpenBSD, but you have an entire Steam library that's just going to be sitting over there collecting dust. And you've paid all this money for these lovely Steam games over the last how many ever years. And you can't play any of those. <laughs> You're, gonna, You're well, not technically wrong. However, I will go ahead and say that it is you you can definitely run into problems there is a little bit of minor setup but i will say uh, i'm i'm going to be doing either a video or a live stream doing it but uh you can use li uh, game streaming on open bsd to essentially use geforce now uh, oh. xbox live stuff like that yeah, yeah i suppose that could work cuz geforce now would tie into your entire steam library so that would actually work um now, okay again i will totally agree with you it's uh, it still don't have access to my Steam, like in yeah. all truest senses. That'd be but, so yeah. much. My, I've looked at OpenBSD, but I don't think I could ever switch to it for Daily Driver. There's just so much stuff there that I like. I use OBS and I rely on a lot of the features of OBS in order to actually work. I can't just record, uh, just the screen or whatever. I have to have all this other stuff to go along with. So I'd miss OBS. Uh. I would probably miss things like a native Discord client, because there's not one. Uh, and nope. I'd probably miss things like Todoist and Zim and all the applications that I use every day. So I think Linux has my heart and will probably remain with it. All right. So uh, you? after I just sat there and proclaimed my love for Linux, <laughs> so we, hadn't, we didn't do a, a, a pod last week. So I didn't get a chance to talk about my experiences with Microsoft Edge. So I switched. I I, I got so I got fed up with Firefox because there are several websites on Firefox that just won't render, 
And that's just because it's so unpopular, the web developers don't go through and test their websites in Firefox. They have no reason to. There's like 12 people that use Firefox. <laughs> you know, being real, you're right there. You, you know what I mean? I mean like, like, there's so few of us that use Firefox, so they have no reason to test it. I mean, most of them do, but there, the, there are a few websites that just wouldn't render. So I got sick of it. And there were several other things, too. Like, it was taking a ton of memory, and it was also going through, and it was just slow sometimes. So I was like, screw this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hop to something different. And I was listening to the Ubuntu podcast, and Alan Pope was talking about how he uses Microsoft Edge as his main browser. And he was talking about how they have vertical tabs, how they have this feature where if you don't use a tab for a while, it actually goes to sleep and takes everything that tab would normally do out of memory. Like, it just doesn't use memory at all. It just goes completely to sleep. And i like, you know what? I may have 64 gigabytes of memory, but I like that feature because then I can use it on my laptop and stuff like that where I don't have 64 gigabytes of memory. And, oh, man. First of all, vertical tabs in, in uh, Microsoft Edge, fantastic. I mean, just so good. I... Like, I understand, I mean, there's going to be somebody saying, well, you can get vertical tabs as an extension in Firefox. Utter trash. I mean, they're just complete and utter garbage. I mean, every single one, there's like five uh, extensions that do this. They're all bad. Uh, there, there's only like one that you can actually customize to be usable. The rest of them are just, I mean, utter trash. And, and especially compared to the vertical tabs in Edge. I mean, they're just, they were so good. Um and then the, the sleeping functionality was really good. And the, I mean, everybody touts the smooth scrolling in Firefox. Edge does it a hundred times better. I mean, it's just like smooth as butter. I mean, no screen tearing, I know, anything like that. But it's also, even with smooth scrolling on in Firefox, it still feels like you're going down lines. Like you, you use your wheel and it goes down like three lines. Like it's not smooth. Um mm-hmm. It's smoother than if you don't have sc- smooth scrolling on, where th- that song feels like you're hitting the page down button half the time. Uh, but in Edge, the smooth scrolling is fantastic. So uh, I switched to Edge, and I was there for like a week and a half. It was, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I could, you know, it was really good. Uh, I had that guilt in the back of my mind that I wasn't supporting FOSS, you know, uh, you know, software. Uh, but I, I was enjoying my time. And then yesterday. Uh, the update came through, and it completely deleted my profile. Like, it signed me out of everything, deleted all my favorites, everything, so I had to go through and set it all up again. I was like, is it going to do this every time I do a fucking update? And apparently, it does. So, uh, I switched back to Firefox. Like, that, that, I, I don't care how great the vertical tabs are. I don't care about any of the other stuff that I just mentioned. If you, if I have to go through, especially in a beta product, product or project that's going to get updated over you know like every few days i'm not going to go through and reset it up every few days it's just not worth it um so yeah i'm back on firefox uh the thing is i tr- i made a video about switching to edge and christ people hated that video <laughs> i mean i mean, mm-hmm. i i, I, I l- that was the first video i have that has a net loss in subscriber you know, like you know if you go into YouTube analytics or whatever, and it'll tell you on that video, like how many subscribers that video got you. Uh, that one had a negative, I mean, I lost like 15 or 20 subscribers uh, because people just hated that I switched to Microsoft Edge. I wonder if they would have hated it if, as equally if I'd switched to Vivaldi because Vivaldi is just as proprietary as Edge is. The only difference is one's backed by a, a huge multinational corporation. Uh, so, yeah, I made that video and it did really well. I mean, way better than I thought it would. Because I mean, first of all, who gives a shit what browser I use? I mean, <laughs> I mean, who cares? I was really thinking you were about to say who, who the hell gives a shit about Edge? I mean, <laughs> I, I mean it just doesn't. Ma- I mean, it's not as if like I'm Mr. Beast or something. Like I'm this big old YouTube influencer or whatever. I have four thousand subscribers. You know it. Does- <laughs> and I'm I'm eternally grateful for everybody who does subscribe. But I still consider myself a very very small YouTuber. So the fact that mm-hmm. there are apparently people out there that care so much about what browser that I use that they would actually actively unsubscribe from the channel be just because of that fact. I mean. There are 9,000 other reasons 
not to subscribe to this channel or to unsubscribe to this channel and that's the one you chose it's so weird that's the hill you're gonna die on <laughs> like like it's a browser okay um and if microsoft if there's a there's a there's a gremlin at microsoft stealing my data uh because i use microsoft edge for a week and a half have at it okay if you if, you know uh that's, I, I think that's the primary difference between me and like a whole bunch of open source guys is that I don't, I'm not in this because of the privacy aspect of it. Google, ha I use Google Docs. I have, I, I use Gmail. Google knows everything about me. I mean, they know what I color mean, your underwear is, man. Well, I'm sure they do because I bought it on a website that sent the receipt to Gmail and they scan all that shit. So I'm sure they do. They also know where I live. They know they know what kind of car I drive. They know everything about me. So my they really know all of your interests too, right? So like, I mean, so they have you pegged. My question is: If Google already knows all this shit about me, why should I care that Microsoft knows it too? Um, especially when I trust okay, Microsoft. Hold on, this is a tangent here. This is a tangent here. Were you about to say I trust Microsoft? You didn't let me forget. You didn't let me finish. I trust Microsoft more than I trust Google. Doesn't say much, <laughs> but I trust Wait, them a little really? bit more. I do actually, just a, just a, just a smidgen more. I mean, it's not like well, Microsoft is, is this fantastically trustworthy company. That's not true at all. Like I don't trust okay, Microsoft well, yeah. at all. But let's say my trust in Microsoft is zero. My trust in Google's like negative a hundred thousand million. You know, so <laughs> you know, so uh, anyways, it doesn't matter. Like privacy was never an aspect of my browser choice because when I think about choosing a browser, I want one that works. You know, uh, when you go out, you and, want a reliable browser. I understand. Right. I when, totally when you go get out, you. When you go out and buy a new car, your first aspect of what car you're going to buy is not what color it is or what brand it is. It's does it drive? You know, does it have a steering wheel and tires that will actually get you down the road? That's the number one thing. That you know, after that you can deal with all the superfluous bullshit. Uh, so yeah, but it doesn't matter. I'm back on Firefox. Everybody can rest easy. Those hopefully those twenty subscribers that left can now come back to the to the fold. <laughs> <laughs> it's just but you know you, you know like those 20 people i mean i mean if you think about it out of 4000 of course there's going to be at least 20 people who will like literally never talk to you never see anything that you ha hear anything that you have to say again just because you tried edge oh i've been blocked there by has those to be people. those people they're literally probably put like a like a, a, a some kind of filter on their youtube search engine or whatever i mean the, the utter hypocrisy when they're all on YouTube. Like, like y'all <laughs> using proprietary software on YouTube, man. Like, I can understand if I lost if, – if, if I was just on Odyssey and people got upset because I was using proprietary software, those people have a luck to stand on because, you know what, it's what Odyssey's all about. Y'all on YouTube, man. <laughs> like, they know all of your information, and it's a good chance that most of y'all are logged in. Like, y'all have Google mm -hmm. accounts vast majority of you at least maybe some of you are using new pipe i suppose but I, especially I, the subscribers well <laughs> they have to have a youtube account i didn't even think about that <laughs> so it's just so it's it's weird all right all right so I, there was something else that i was going to talk about but i don't remember what it was um I, i'm sure i'll think about it later some something else that i was going to rant about but like i said i'll have to think about it later anyways so Oh, I was going to talk about Sway. So I've been trying for like two and a half weeks now to use Sway Window Manager to make a video. And I've been very stubborn about it because I could just install it in a virtual machine and make a video that way. But I wanted to do it on hardware. But for the life of me, I can't get OBS to work in Wayland. Like it says in the latest release that it, it, OBS is now Wayland ready. That window capture now works. It doesn't work. At least not for me, and I don't know. I don't mm -hmm. like um, people keep keep going on about how Wayland is all ready and stuff. Like it's ready for prime time. Like no, it didn't. No, it didn't. No, no, no. It's not there no. yet. Um, it's getting closer. I think it's closer now than it ever has been before. But that's it's been in development since what twenty 
2012, 2014. I mean, that's not really saying all that much. Um, so um, I do have a quick question, though, because you said you were tr- trying to record using OBS on Wayland. Um, when you try and do a screen grab, like for the entire screen, uh, do you just get a black image? Yeah. Okay, that's what I was getting to. It's weird. I, like, you'll get that issue on Wayland, but then for some ungodly reason, you install Fedora and install OBS there, and it will work. Like, you, you know, it's got its own issues, but... Yeah, it's it's about a 90% chance that it's some kind of dependency, you know, thing that it needs. Because in, cause I installed OBS in probably DWM is probably where I installed it from. So it's installing it for an Xorg system, and it, maybe there's a special package in Arch that you have to download or something. I don't know. It's possible that I could do- uninstall OBS from there, and I can install it as a snap or something, and it might work. Cause, or a flat pack, because I'm sure uh, Fedora's probably using flat pack version of it, yeah. I'm assuming. Uh, so that's probably the issue. They probably have some plug-in or something that, you know, is required in order to make it work, and in, in 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 which case it's still broken, <laughs> you know, you know yeah. ma- because for the vast majority of people, they're going to have the X work version installed, and whatever. So there's another thing for me to rant on. I mean, we haven't even got to the contact information, but there's something else I want to rant at you know, for a minute. When you use a snap package on a system that doesn't come with snap out of the box. The most annoying thing in Linux, and I really should save this for next week's topic, but I want to talk about this now. When you install a snap package, it, it puts a folder in your home directory called snap, and it drives me absolutely fucking bonkers. And the, so every time I have to do the five top five apps of the month list, I, there's always one of them that I have to install as a snap. And I almost immediately after I'm done with it, I have to go delete that snap uh, folder. But I realize there's something else that does that too. So if you install uh, an application that is coded in Go, Go does the exact same thing. Like I'm, I'm looking at my uh, file manager right now, and they put a folder in your home directory, not a hidden folder, but an actual folder, like a whole directory, called Go. And it's just there. Like, no, don't, no, no, <laughs> don't do that to me. I hate that. I, I... I see that as like literally the most uh, egregious offense as a program. Like if if you're going to be made for Linux, any Unix based system, do not just create folders in the home directory. Like like let, let's be honest. Let's let's put it in human terms. It that's literally someone coming over and setting down like not not just a small item like a pa- like a paperweight. It's like someone coming in, moving in a ton of their shit, sending it inside of your house, and then being like, "Peace, gone." Like it. Somebody came over rude. and put a, a a file cabinet in your house. <laughs> you know that's exactly <laughs> what they did. Yeah, it's it's just so stupid. It drives me. And I, I, the thing is, it doesn't happen on every distro. So, like, Ubuntu, for some reason, the home of Snaps, the foundation of Snaps, doesn't do this. They don't have a Snap folder in their home directory. Their Snap folder is hidden. Why this happens on Arch, where Snaps has to be installed, is the stupidest thing ever. And it, I think, outside of the whole proprietary nature of Snaps, this one thing is what pisses me off the most about Snaps. And it's such a stupid thing. It's like it's in my head, but my I mean my home directory outside of the the hidden files are a mess. I mean I I've tried to get rid of some of the hidden files, but half the time stupid developers can't realize that we have a config file for a reason. You know, put the mm-hmm. dot files in the mm-hmm. config file. It doesn't make any sense. But and ha- half of those you can't change. They're hard coded to be in the home directory. But the non hidden folders in directories in my Home home directory are pristine. I have de- the desktop folder and I have a media folder. That's it. Um, oh, and I also have the vir- the virtual machine folder or directory. Those are the three top level directories that I have in my home directory. That's it. Everything else is in subdirectories, and that's the way I want it because I want it nice and clean. It's very uh, anal retentive, I guess is what she would say. But uh, the fact so that- you don't have like XDG user dirs, like you don't have any of the I- downloads folder, any of that. I do, but I've changed them because you can change those uh, in a folder well, yeah. in your configuration folder f- uh, file uh, to change them to wherever you want. So I've moved those all into my media folder, uh, so that they're in, like they're in subdirectories, and it just works. You know, it's fine. Um, I don't know why I care, but it's still just the stupidest thing. So 
We're now 26 minutes in <laughs> to this podcast. <laughs> we haven't even got to the, and it's my fault because I got into a ranty mood. I was like, I'm, I'm very much of an, a ranty mood. So I am all right. always down for rants. Always. <laughs> like, I, I, I've made Saturdays the day where I'll go through and, and do a video that's completely controversial, but I, I, I didn't do it this last, last Saturday I did die an I3 video. So I still had my rant video to do, and I did it on, I think I did it on Tuesday. I did a, a rehash of the Linux Mint one, so uh, that was fun. <laughs> Surprisingly enough, that one has a positive like-to-dislike ratio, which is way better than the original video, so. Um, What's all yeah. about? Yeah, yeah, that's all I care about. Give me the likes, bro. Uh, give me the likes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like an Instagram star, you know. <laughs> All right. Anyways, you can if you want to follow us uh, or contact us in any way, you can do so in any number of ways. You can follow us on Twitter at the Linux Cast. Uh, you can subscribe to all of our audio feeds and stuff like that at the LinuxCast.org, which I have been promising a website, and I have started the website. Like I've started, I have the file, and I have things in the file like the .html file it's there uh so there's been progress holy shit i'm having a heart attack if you want to get in contact with us via email you can do so email at the linuxcast.org you can support us on patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast you can get uh you can follow tyler on odyssey or youtube you've been spending most of your time on youtube now though right uh so follow yeah. him on youtube if you're on odyssey he is over there all of his stuff is synced but most of his stuff ends up on youtube those links will be in the video description and the podcast description below you can sub subscribe okay I, I i was doing so well until that last part you can subscribe to us on youtube at youtube.com slash linuxcast <sighs> okay so that's the contact information so every week we choose one news link item thing a jig uh each and this week is no different so tyler why don't you tell us what your news of the week is uh, mine was from, uh, it's from Slashdot, and apparently, uh, I, I thought this would be a good little conversation piece here. Uh, it is a bit of news. Um, Amazon is, a, uh, is apparently planning to monitor the keyboard strokes and mouse movements of customer service employees in an attempt to stop rogue work rogue workers, imposters, or hackers from accessing customers' data um okay this is not really that big of a uh, of news because i mean it, like really if we're being honest if you work for a major corporation you should just assume that you're getting spied on at all times i mean it it's reasonable to assume if you work for a major global corporation you're probably being spied on let's just be real um i think the in the interesting part here is do you honestly think that them essentially having a keyboard logger on all of their devices for their employees, is that actually going to stop someone from hacking Amazon or being a, like, I don't even know what a, what the hell is a rogue worker? What, what does that even mean? Well, I think like maybe selling company secrets to somebody else. I, I don't think that they're trying to, uh, prevent hackers from the outside to get in. I'm thinking they're more thinking of information from inside the company going out. But I, I wouldn't be surprised. First of all, I was surprised that Slashdot is still a thing. Second of all, <laughs> um, <laughs> like I, I had no clue <laughs> it was even still around. Like This thing's from the 90s. Anyways, mm -hmm. uh, um, I, I don't think it's much of a, would be much of a surprise, like you said, if every company doesn't actually do something like this. Um, so, I mean, but I mean, I, that and the vast majority of their, I mean, a, a company that will, that logs and monitors the number of time and length of time you're in the bathroom. Uh, are you surprised they're doing something like this? I mean, I'm surprised they don't ask you what you did in the bathroom while you were there. <laughs> I mean, so uh, this doesn't surprise me. Whatsoever. I mean, if we're being honest, the only reason Amazon employees are now getting bathroom breaks is because they got so much backlash for so many drivers wearing diapers to work. Right. So. And and 
as you say, let's be honest about it. They can tell what you did in the bathroom by the length of time you were in there. So <laughs> if you were all oh, in yeah. there for a minute, oh, yeah. you net went number one. You went in there for longer than that, you went number two. So, <laughs> so mm-hmm. and, and if you were in there for half an hour, you were wanking. So, <laughs> so, so I mean, they know how they know ex- precisely what you did in the bathroom. Uh, so the fact that they're logging. Mo- <laughs> This podcast has gone off the rails. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, and I have a feeling people will like it, though. It's a good off the rails. Uh, like, uh, are are we surprised? No, we're not surprised. <laughs> no, no. the The only thing, though, is I uh, like. My my question to you would be: Do you think this will? Because I mean, I, like, I I guess when I when I hear rogue workers, imposters, or hackers, like I I'm assuming like exactly what you're saying, like someone in the company trying to take data and use it maliciously. But like, if you think about it for a second, like again, most crimes like like this, unless it's some Mr. Hacker Man type BS, it this is going to be someone like the type of employee that they're trying to stop right here is someone who like, let's say me and you had a disagreement and I really disliked you. And, but I worked at Amazon and you ordered a package. I saw your name. I saw your address and everything. Like if if we're being honest, if I, for whatever reason, disliked you enough, I I don't need to copy the address to remember it. Like if I'm going to do something malicious to you, having a keyboard logger and a mouse, like logger, I don't think that's going to do anything because as soon as I see that information, if I want to do something bad with it, I'm, I, I probably the incentive, I guess, would probably outweigh the oh, I just forgot that important piece of information that I was going to do something nefarious with, you know. Well, I, I think it's probably more for like industrial espionage kind of stuff where. Uh, Amazon's developing things for the the next Echo thing, and they're uh, somebody decided they're going to sell that information to Google or something. I don't know, um, but that kind of okay, information. Okay. Uh, basically, what I think this is is that their their level of spy, spying probably on their on their their level of spying on their employees has, has probably gotten a little bit closer to the user than what it used to be before. Because I'm. 100% positive they probably have uh, like packet sniffers and stuff like that installed for their uh, their networks and stuff that monitor the input incoming and outcoming for the, the network traffic so they probably know if somebody sends something out over the network but this would this would allow them to monitor not that I'm defending them but this would allow them to monitor uh, things uh, that people like would save to a USB port or something. Uh, or a USB key, or print out, or whatever. Um, so I don't know. Uh, it it still doesn't surprise me at all. But I, it also wouldn't surprise me that it, every uh, major tech company does this. Yeah, same. So now, what uh, about your article? All right. So this was actually last week, but I think we can still talk about it a little bit and. Uh, so, Elementary 06 Odin was officially released, and over on your channel, you try this out, uh, and you challenged several others to try it out as well. And uh, I know Terminal for Life did, I know Peter did, I think his name is Peter, right? Is his name Peter? Mm-hmm. Yep, um, Peter. He de- did he change his name, or did he delete his channel? Uh, he deleted his channel. Dude, there has been so many people being like, Come back, come back. Uh, he deleted his channel because he didn't really think that he had that much to offer. Um, well, that makes me really sad because I don't have that much to same. offer, and look at my ass. You know, <laughs> you know. So I, I, I mean, seriously. I mean, I think that's how we all look at ourselves. We all don't really look at ourselves like we've got a ton of it. Like I don't, I don't start making a video and think like, oh, I'm going to explain something that's going to change somebody's life. Like they need right. to know this. So. Screw elementary OS. Let's talk about this for a second. The way <laughs> Linux YouTubing works is DT does a video, okay? And then Brody Robertson steals the topic, okay? And then, uh, or Luke Sm- S- Smith steals the topic, or uh, literally, it could be any order of this. Like, Luke could do a, a, t- a video, and then somebody else steals the topic. Somebody does a video, it's then is stolen and filters down to every single level of Foss Tuber. So that's exactly how it works. Uh, <laughs> and if you don't think that that's the way it works, you haven't been paying any attention because we all steal each other's mm-hmm. content. So it, the fact that he thought he had nothing to offer is just silly because none of us have anything to offer. 
Um, <laughs> yeah, we're just stealing topics amongst each other. We share shit. That's it's open. It's open source ideas, man. That's the way it works. It, I mean, if we're all, this... all being honest, we're not really informing people as much as we are giving our opinions on stuff. That's the main right. thing. Exactly. It's. It, I mean, I've, none of us are actually directly copying. Like, I'm not downloading. DT's videos using YouTube DL and reposting them in myself. I think if I did that, people would be able to tell the difference between what I look like and what DT looks like. First of all, I got hair. Okay? I'm just... I mean, there's a difference, okay? He also, he's much more... Uh, Tidally groomed than I ever will be. So <laughs> I think I, I think, think they would. I think notice. that would be. A, I think it would be a really funny uh, thing. Uh, no, I highly doubt we do this. But like, it, if a few of us, like, I, I don't know if you've heard the term going around uh, again since we've completely gone off on a tangent here. I don't know if you've heard it, but there are quite a few people referring to me, you, uh, Terminal for Life, um, and I there was one more person. I can't remember. Dang it. Uh, I'm sorry. Wh whoever you are, I'm, I'm sorry I'm forgetting your username. Anyway, um, all of us together uh, are like the crew. They keep calling us the Linux crew. I keep hearing <laughs> that. If, if all of us did together, like simultaneously, like we, down we all downloaded like one DT video and we perfectly emulated it ourselves. Like we talked the same way, paced, like you watched the video and just reset everything that he did, his mannerisms. <laughs> and we all uploaded it. I feel like people would be really tripped out by that. I'd be like, what's going on in the Linux space, man? So funny story is I did a video probably about six months ago about left window manager. And at that point, I was going through and cycling colors for the thumbnails. And on that particular day, my color scheme was purple and white. <laughs> and it looked exactly like a DT thumbnail, except for I obviously didn't have DT on it. Like, I had like 10 comments, people commenting on, hey, hey these, these colors look awful, fully familiar. <laughs> like, okay. All right. <laughs> Man, we ha <laughs> we've gotten so far off the, 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 the path of... Uh, Oh, all right, all right, okay. First of all, 40 minutes in. 40 minutes in. Haven't made it to the main topic yet. Uh, and I do have to stop by quarter after four. So uh, <laughs> at least close thereafter. So we, we only got about 20 minutes left. So Elementor 6, it came out. It's ter terrible. Uh, you shouldn't use it. I think that's... No debate there. Um, well, okay. So it's basically Elementor 5 with a dark mode. Which is, looks awesome. I mean, it looks so mm -hmm. good. Uh, they did a Much really better. good job. I'm ass uh, I'm assuming that's what took them so long is that they were <laughs> stealing the. I mean, the problem is, is it looks like the add a weight to dark theme. It looks exactly like that, or however the hell you say mm -hmm. that name, right? It looks exactly like that. So it's not as if they did something custom. It's exact. I mean, it looks exactly like they, the add a weight. Hold on, I, I will go off here for a second. They effing added a dark theme. That's. That, I mean, can you tell, is there one other, is there anything else in elementary OS other than a dark theme? They changed their app center from hosting it, their own repositories, and using some of the Ubuntu repositories, to using entirely flat packs. So if you go into the app center and search for things that don't have flat pack versions, you can't find them. So if you want to install Firefox, not there. You want to install OBS, not there. You want to install all of these programs that you probably want to install, not there. You can, you can install them from the terminal just easily. You can also add FlatHub to the App Center somehow, and you can get then get the wider range of FlatHub things where Firefox and OBS are still there. But by default, that stuff's not, a, not approachable. So basically what they did is they added a dark theme and made their App Center, which was really good. I mean, their App Center mm -hmm. was really good in, in 5. They made it mm -hmm. 100 times worse. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just, it was, <laughs> I mean, I, I understand the argument behind wanting sandbox packages like Flatpak and Snaps. I can understand it. Like, theoretically, I can get my mind around it. I understand the security aspects of having something like that ha thing. But you've made your distribution worse. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and, for and, the and end was, user, okay? Because, I mean, right. if, if we're being honest, Elementary OS is targeting a market of not necessarily, I don't think there's many people who have been using Linux for, like, 20 years and choose elementary os right i mean the, the, yeah their focus is on new users and that makes this even more egregious because those people aren't going to know first of all 
when I asked about this, I asked my community about this. I didn't ask the developers. When I asked about this in the community tab, uh, I got responses like, "Well, you know what? You can add FlatHub to the to the App Store. You can add. You can. Okay, uh, I understand that. I know how to do that. You know how to do that. The people in my comment sections know how to do that." Joe Schmo, who's just turning to Linux and have chosen Elementary OS as their beginning distro, they don't know how to do that. They don't even know that that's an option. Um, ma- maybe Let's if be the- real. It is asinine for anyone to assume that a new user knows to go to FlatHub, install a package there, then it's then magically a whole bunch of software is going to appear in this. That is asinine. Yeah, because like- it's, it, that, that, that level of discovery for, for that feature is so buried by the fact that people need to know how what FlatHub is. They need to know how to get to FlatHub. They need to know how to install a flat pack using... I mean, it's just clicking on a button, but still. They, know, they need to know how to do all those things. And the level, the barrier of entry of even knowing what FlatHub is, is, I mean... Yeah, we could do it. We could pull. Who was it? Was it Jay Leno that used to go out on the streets in New York City and hold up a microphone asking people stupid questions? This could be one of those questions. Do you know what FlatHub is? Ninety nine percent of people have no clue what it is. Uh, My grandmother and, uses Linux, dude, and she gets along just fine with it. If I tried to explain flat packs to her, I'm pretty sure I would melt her brain. Like. <laughs> My dad uses Ubuntu. I finally got my dad on Ubuntu, and he freaks out every time he has to enter his password when Chrome starts up because Chrome asks for your password. So I can just imagine, hey, you want to install that solitaire game? You have to, but it's not in the store. You actually have to go through and go to the website. It's called FlatHub. You have to click on the thing, and then he'd probably shoot me. <laughs> I'm just mm-hmm. saying. I, I mean, like, why, just, you, why did you install this hard to use and annoying operating system? And the, the the weirdest thing about this, Tyler, is that Elementary OS 6 took a long time. Like, this is based on Ubuntu LTS 2004. They've been working on it since then. So that's almost two years. And we're, we're, we're coming up very close to the next LTS when they're going to have to start working on the next version of Elementary OS. Uh, so, I mean, they're way far behind. And it feels like I mean, they did a whole bunch of little stuff in this as well. I mean, we're, we're, we don't want to write off the fact that they've added they added a whole bunch of stuff for uh, accessibility. They've added a new... They completely rewrote the notification system and all that stuff. I understand. They're a very, very small team. Okay. We understand. But you made your distribution worse. <laughs> you, mm-hmm. you know, you went, you went from one thing to another that took ages... I mean, it literally took literal ages for you to do this, and you, the end product is worse. Now, maybe in the long term, this switch away from the repositories to the flat packs will work out for them. That's fine, but they're going to gain an entirely bad reputation for not having software in their app store, which is what they were known for. They were known for the app store where people could pay for applications in a way that supported developers, and it was amazing, and it was awesome, and all this stuff, and now half the applications that were in the App Center before that were built for elementary just aren't there. Uh, so, for I mean, I only have one example of this, is, and, and it may have changed now, because, I mean, they've been approving applications since the time I reviewed this, but the one example I had when I tested this was Planner. There's a, a to-do list app called Planner. It was developed for elementary OS, not in the App Center. Eddie's not in there either. Eddie's a fantastic dev installer. Absolutely love it. Not in there. Yeah, so, I mean, it it just blows my mind that you made it worse. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, you want to, you redo your code, your, they had this, they have this thing called code. If they, let's say they redid that and they made it worse in the next episode or the next install, who cares? It's an application. But it's, an app, it, literally, this was the thing you were known for. It, it'd be like Elvis deciding he was going to redo his brand image and becoming a country singer or a rapper <laughs> or something. I don't know. I mean, literally. A rapper's you, good. <laughs> you, you took what she was known for and what she did really, really well and completely changed it and made it worse. I mean, for all we know, Elvis would have been a fantastic R&B artist. Who knows? But <laughs> Maybe. But here's the thing, too. Um 
the, I, I think the most egregious thing against elementary OS is if you go and read their post about elementary OS six, like it is, it's the most pretentious um, and like pat on the back type article to read. Like it's, it's really creepy to read it because it's, they very much hype themselves up and make it seem like they're doing almost everywhere throughout that documentation. They're doing something revolutionary, innovative. And I'm like, dude, adding a dark theme is like, look, I, I very much like the dark theme. I very much do. I think it's a major improvement calling, adding a dark theme and innovation is quite frankly, the most stupid thing I have ever heard come out of a developer's mouth. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. It, it, like, okay, so it's pretty, right? Their, their, op- their operating system has always been, it's been pretty. And that's what they've, they're have they known for outside of the App Center, is that they have a very good design sense, and they try to enforce that design philosophy on every application that is designed for their operating system, whether it's by them or by third-party developers. And that is a fine way of doing things. Like, whatever, I don't really particularly agree with it. I think it increases Linux fragmentation, but whatever. I don't care. You know, I can still install Planner on my Arch system. It works fine. You know? In fact, I can install it on my Arch system, and they can't install it on Elementary OS. So, you know, (laughs) win-win. But... uh, um, and like I said, that might have changed between the, whatever. But my my point is, is there are certain things that they can be proud of. Like they they made a a pretty operating or a desktop environment, but it doesn't feel like this release is something that has enough in it to warrant that kind of rah rah we, we're awesome kind of thing. Now, oh yeah. All that saying is that they're a very small team. So, I mean, any when, when you're just a few people and you go through and make any accomplishment, congratulations. You did a good job. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe tone down the arrogance just a tad in terms of you're so special because, uh, t- yes, you added a whole bunch of small stuff. Like, you added a whole bunch of small stuff that's really good. Like, the new notification system, way better than the old. Uh, but for the ma- vast majority of people that only see with their eyes, uh, all they're going to see is the desktop environment that looks exactly like Elementary 5.1. It looks precisely the same, unless you turn on the dark theme, in which case, uh, congratulations, you have a dark theme. You know, Mm -hmm. so uh, I I don't want to... At the end of the day, is a dark theme worth a worse user experience? Right, no. I don't don't think so. Like I said, maybe maybe the App Store thing will get better uh, as time goes, I'm sure it will. It's probably better now yeah. than it was a couple weeks ago, and that's fine. But the fact, that, I mean, that as I said, they're a small team. The fact that they've added work to, for themselves to tra- make this transition, so they have to go through and approve every single app that goes into their app store that's not from like flat hub. It's if they want to host it as a flat pack themselves, they have to approve all those things, and they have to do it one by one. And that's, I mean, first of all, that's such an Apple thing to do, right? I mean, they're trying to be mm-hmm. safe. Like, fine, I understand. But you've added this work. You're literally redoing work. You've done this before. And, I mean, and maybe they consider the the whole flat pack and sandboxing thing worth the extra work. Maybe they do. I don't particularly think that that is extra work that they should have done. Or maybe they should have had some kind of transition period where... They kept all the old apps in there, like the old way of doing the apps, and then slowly transitioned into the flat packs things, you know, so that if you wanted to install f- Firefox out of the box, you could, you know, mm-hmm. and right now you can't. And everybody and, will say, and mainly well, well, their, f- their own first party apps are not even available on launch. Like when it launched, you could not just go in there and download Eddie and it... That is egregious. Like, don't do that. Yeah. Like, yeah. But well, yeah. I, the thing that really, I mean, the, there are two things that are missing in there that really just blew my mind. One of them was Firefox, because first of all, nobody's going to use Epiphany for very long. It's an okay browser for that one time you want to use it, but uh, after you've used it that one time, you're going to go and download a real browser, whether it's Chrome or Chromium or Volley or Brave or Firefox, whatever. Uh, and none of those are in the App Center. 
And we've got to remember, these are for new users, so they don't know how to install shit from the command line. They just don't. Uh, second of all, uh, you're, uh, one of the things that people do when they switch from Windows to Linux is they look for applications that they can use as alternatives. And one of the most used applications or software suites in the history of the world is Microsoft Office. And there is not a single piece of Office software that you can install for elementary OS out of the box. You can't install LibreOffice. And it doesn't have it installed. It's not there. And like it blows my mind. I mean, it's just so incredibly... I mean, like... And, and people are going to argue, well, well, you can get those things, but new users aren't going to know that. Like I said, we just, they're just not going to know it. And it's it's so weird. I mean, it's just so yep. weird, right? And then to be so proud of it <laughs> out of the box. Like, at, at least be honest and say, well, you not, we needed to release this. Otherwise, we weren't going to make it until the next LTS. So we're releasing this. It's a partial product. It has... Great aesthetics, but the apps just aren't there yet. We're, we're working on it. But not to yeah, say, like, well... Or just put a notification or something in the software center that lets you know, hey, this is uh, early development. Some applications won't be here. That would have been great. Or a, a, a pop-up that says, you know, the... the like When you first open up the the app center or something. I think there actually is a pop-up already when you first open the the app center or something. I, I seem to remember that. In that pop-up, just say, would you like to add FlatHub? Problem solved. Is it that hard? I, I mean, uh, I, I think... I, I Okay, so if you install Ubuntu, all the Ubuntu stuff in the Ubuntu store it, are snaps. They're all that snaps. But you can add other sources, right? And that's, that's hidden by default, but the thing is, with the Ubuntu software store, when that first switched over to Snaps, it had all the stuff you wanted in it already. It was there. They handled that transition so much better than what Elementor did. All right, so we wasted just a ton of time. We're at an hour. <laughs> We're at 53 right. minutes. We have not made it to the main topic yet. <laughs> so... Uh, I have a I so I have a proposition for you, Tyler. Can we shove the main topic off to next week? Uh, because I really do have to stop in the next ten fifteen minutes. And I, I, I I'm really glad that you have to too, because technically speaking, I'm pretty sure in about ten to fifteen minutes, my mom's gonna burst through that door and be like, "Hey, I need that headset. She's leaving out, and she's taking this with her. I gotta go yeah. pick up my own." All right. All right. So. so this was supposed to, the. I don't think we've even mentioned the main topic yet. Honestly. <laughs> I don't think we have. <laughs> That's how far we are. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Um, Same. So the main topic was, was supposed to be: Should native Linux gaming uh, be, a, you know, the focus or whatever? I don't even know how we phrased it. Uh, so we will talk about native Linux gaming and the Stream Deck and all that kind. The Steam Deck uh next week yeah okay that'll be our main topic i promise i won't spend a half an hour at the beginning ranting my ass off uh the main hey, topic I, for I this week on i talk just as much man yeah the main topic we'll, we'll just use the elementary os thing for the main topic this week um <laughs> uh <laughs> we just spent an hour didn't do the main topic <laughs> we just didn't get to it uh but we had to stop. Otherwise, we'll sit here and we'll rant for the next three hours. Uh, mm -hmm. So we will talk about native Linux gaming next week. So we're going to skip over that and move right to the picks of the week. So, Tyler, what are your picks of the week? Uh, mine would be Type Speed. Uh, it's a, I mean, you're familiar with the game. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure, did, did we play together or did you ask me to play together? Uh, we're talking about Type Racer. Oh, that's right. I, that's right. I asked you, and then we took we uh, a monkey type is the other one that I recommended like a couple weeks ago. And I did, I did mess around with monkey type quite a bit. I spent a lot of time. Did not realize that my words per minute were sitting at a humble uh, fifty three when I originally started. Got that? I've 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 improved my words per minute all the way up to seventy six words per minute is now my average. Um, I can get higher than that, but that's my average. Um, much better, much better. And it was disturbing to figure out just how many people. Dude, looking at the leaderboard on Monkey Type will scare the living hell out of you. There are some people yeah. that can type 
too fast. Like that's not even human. Like two, there's like the top dude is like 278 words per minute. Like how, how do you not break your keyboard? Like what? But um, yeah, this is a really nice little game. Just it's a terminal, um, terminal based game. You can actually do multiplayer on it. Um, you know, challenge other people, play, play, you know, against the, the AI, the earth really in all honesty, just test your skills, play against yourself. Um, but it's, it's a lot of fun. I played it, um, I want to say for like two hours. Um, it does get stressful. I did not know that a typing game could get pretty stressful. It just can. All right. So you're younger than I am. In school, did you ever have to play uh, with anything from Mavis Beacon? Or any typing I don't test at all? Know. all yes, right, so we did we did have to do typing tests. Right, so when I was in school, which is probably a good ten years before <laughs> before you, uh we there was a Mavis, Mavis Beacon is still around. It's like it's not nearly as popular as it was, but Mavis Beacon like used to be the only typing test you could use. Like it was the only one. I don't even know who the fuck Mavis Beacon is, but you know, she's around. <laughs> uh but anyways, basically they had this version of that game that was like Duck Hunt. Because this was basically right around the time Duck Hunt was popular. And you had to type the words, which is basically the equivalent of shooting the duck. Uh, and if they landed on the ground, you know, obviously, you know, you fail. Uh, that was a lot of fun. <laughs> that was like on one of the original Macintosh computers. That's how old that was. I mean, so it was like, that was, uh, that was back when Oregon Trail was like a new game. <laughs> yeah, de- that is definitely... Uh... I remember in school, we were not playing stuff like um, Oregon Trail for sure. I remember there was this, we sent it all around school. There was a, a like a cracked version of uh, Half-Life that went around our school. And so during every computer class, I mean, literally every single one, the teacher would always walk around the room like doing the projects. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, but people would walk around, uh, or the teacher would walk around, and people would literally like close Half Life, and be working on their project for like two minutes. As soon as he looked away, Half Life reminds me of the reminds me of the moment in uh, the first <coughs> Avengers where Tony Stark comes in to the to the air deck, and that guy's playing Galaga. <laughs> <laughs> he thought we wouldn't notice, but he definitely did. <laughs> but we did. <laughs> oh man! Uh, spoiler alert: He dies at the end. Uh, <laughs> no, you can't spoil that, man. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so all right. So uh, I have two picks. Just uh, uh, just real quick. If you uh, are interested in watching other people do typing tests and stuff, there's a guy called No, This Is John on YouTube. Uh, I will leave a link of the in the video description of his YouTube channel, and he uses the Dvorak keyboard layout, and he can go over 200 words per minute with that weight layout. And you just watch him typing. It's like, <laughs> holy shit, right? I, I, I'm gonna, pl- uh, I'm gonna see if I can. Uh, let's see. Here. Um, I mean, what's your uh, your average is over a hundred, right? All right. So my t- no, 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 not my average. My top speed oh, okay. is a, is a hundred and like seventeen or something like that. Uh, my average is around eighty five to ninety. So you're oh, not okay. too far behind me. Uh, uh, okay. It really depends on what kind of typing test I'm doing. If I'm doing the quotes, like the actual have proper sentence structure, I can do over 100 easily all the time. Um, if I do the random word stuff, I'm much slower, usually around 85 to 90. So, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, it depends. Uh, anyways, check out his channel if you're interested in watching somebody who will always be able to type faster than you. Because uh, <laughs> you're never getting up to those speeds. I'm, so, I... I I have a like a to-do list that I go through every single day of stuff that I have to do, right? And one of those things is to practice typing. I do it every single day. Um, and I've been doing it now for almost a year, maybe even over a year. Uh, I haven't seen I, – I, I type way faster now than I did when I first started. But I don't feel at, that I'm ever going to get to the point where I really shove past the 100 word per minute mark. I think 100 word per minute is probably where I'm going to be and probably where I'll stay always. Uh I, I don't foresee my myself ever getting to two hundred words per minute. It's just my hands hurt just looking at it. Anyway, so that wasn't actually my pick of the week. My pick of the week was uh, Orbital Bullet. 
Uh, this is a game on Steam. It's like uh, I'm not actually sure how much it's. It's like, thir- it's like thirteen bucks on uh, on Steam. It is an early development, so it's still being developed. Uh, and it's you know those like game those shooters that are just two D, like you just side scrollers, right? Mm-hmm. It's kind of like this. That only instead of that, it goes in a circle. So even even your bullets or stuff are are you know curved. It's really fun. Uh, it's not. It's not a very in de- depth game. Like there's no storyline or anything like that. You just go in and start killing aliens or something like that. I don't even tell they are. Uh, and your object is to stay alive. the 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 loot system and the upgrade system is broken. It's just. It, yeah, it, it I, is. I mean, I watched your live stream. Uh, it 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 definitely could use some work UI wise, like your. I guess, I guess menu wise would be the better way of describing it. It's not like the UI is itself bad. It's just it, yeah, it needs work. Well, the the biggest issue I have is that they 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 have perks and they have level up systems and all this stuff, but you can't tell the difference between level one and level whatever. They all feel exactly the same. Uh, so maybe it's just because I'm still very early in the game, but it feels like their uh, perk system and their skill level system is broken it, just because it it doesn't feel like when you go through and add skills to your little character that you're actually getting anything for them. It's just, you should, you're shooting bullets. The other thing that drives me absolutely bonkers about this game is that you run out of ammo constantly. Now, most of that is just because I'm one of those spray and spray motherfuckers that, that you know, mm-hmm. just shoots as many bullets as possible hoping to kill something. That's mostly <laughs> my fault. Uh, but the access to new ammo is very limited in this game. You're supposed to get some for every, like, alien or whatever that you kill, but you don't get for everyone. And they have some of them that will restock all of your ammo all at once. But those are... It just feels too rare. So uh, the amount of times I ran out of ammo was quite high. Uh, yeah. Anyways. So uh, that is the Linux cast. We, uh, it, we're we still over an hour. We didn't do the main topic. It... <laughs> We're just going to call this Rantathon. <laughs> All we did was rant the whole damn time. Uh, but I think it was good. So before we go, I'd like to take a moment to thank my current patrons. Uh, Devon, Chris, East Coast Web, Gen 2 is Fun 2, Marcus, Maglin, Sven, Jackson, Knife and Tool, Mitchell, Mr. Fox, Art Center, Merrick, and Camp. Uh, next week, we're going to talk about Linux, native Linux gaming. The week after that, which was supposed to be next week, uh, the five things we love about Linux, five things we hate about Linux. I'm sure that some of the things we talked about today will probably make a reappearance because I'm going to bitch about that snap folder and the fucking thing again <laughs> as many times as possible because it just pisses and me I, off. And I definitely won't mention Pulse or anything like that. That's, that's <laughs> oh, for sure. Oh, we're we're going to spend the whole hour on Pulse Audio. I hope you know this because it's horrible. Uh, anyway, so that is the, that's a little sneak peek of what's coming up next week and the week after. Thanks, everybody, for watching. We'll see you next time.